Chuck Loaf here, 1200 Films Podcast, all horror, all the time. Speaking of horror, is anyone else looking forward to the presidential debates like I am? Oh my god, that will be a horror show. I don't talk politics on this show, as I think it should be separate, but that's going to be, it's going to be bloody. There will be blood. Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, great movie. Uh and I just applied to be a super reviewer on Rotten Tomatoes. As much as I push their website, I think that should that should happen. But I, I will see. We'll see. I think that's the next step for me in my progression as a reviewer. We'll see. Thumbs thumbs up. Fingers crossed. And of course, the rating scale at the bottom. We have dumpster fire garbage slash. Throw the baby out with the bathwater. And then up from that, we have can't quite recommend, and then okay if desperate, and then put it on your watch list, and then put it on top of your watch list, because it needs to be seen immediately. Does anything on this list have to be seen immediately? Mm, no. Mm, nope, not so much. Uh, but there is some nice movies. Uh, let's start. Let's go. Bingo. Bingo, bingo. Uh, 2019, The Shed. Critic rating, 65%, according to Rotten Tomatoes. And an audience score of 37. The Shed is about this young boy who is orphaned and is now living with his uncle. He's a teenager in high school. Remember those years? And then uh, with all his troubles as it is, plus he's like the weird student. He has something in his shed that's killing everything. Killing pets, animals, people. So what do you do? So that's the scenario of this wonderful little film. Uh, the Shed. Ch check it out. Two thumbs up. But I can only put it on the watch list. It's not perfect. Uh, 2000. Uh, no, 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 not 2000. 1986. One Dark Night. No critic rating, but an audience score of 42. So, Meg Tilly, who stars in this, is uh, basically double dare to stay in a mortuary overnight to join some college, whatever, college group. And, um, and then some of the other girls sneak in and play pranks on her. And then, of course... Uh, they awaken the spirit of a recently deceased serial killer who starts manipulating all dead bodies. And it's, it's a special effects nightmare. It's, uh, yeah, someone had too much budget to spend on special effects. So they said, let's go all out and let's do everything we can with all we got. And the special effects with all the dead bodies and corpses running around all kind of took over the film and kind of ruined it. It's too bad, so sad. Can't quite recommend this film. It did co-star someone I recognized. For those that remember Dottie from Pee-wee's Big Adventure, she popped up in this. This was made one year after Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Her name is Elizabeth Daly. I never knew that until I looked it up just now. And she is still working feverishly to this day. She mostly does TV work and some voice work, but hey, she's still working. Uh, next film, 2019. This one had multiple names. The original name was Anyone Home? Question mark. And then it became Model Home. It doesn't matter because this movie is not good. Uh, IMD gave it a 4.1 out of 10. Uh, so this chick with this young child is hired to move into this empty house to basically, excuse me, maintain it and keep it up and make it look pretty and look at festive. And Kathy Baker, who's always nice to see her, is her boss. She was well casted in this. Some of the reviews I saw on this said it's a, it's a, it's an expose on someone being bipolar. I've known people that were bipolar. This is not bipolar. This is like pure craziness. This is pure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but it's 
not bipolar. It's not, I'm happy one day, I'm sad, it's, it's, I'm losing my mind. And that's what this is. The, the mom is losing her mind, and the poor boy is stuck in the middle of this. But still, it's not great. Uh, I'd say, again, can't quite recommend. Uh, next film, oh my god. 1976, Island of Death. No critic rating, but an audience score of 25. These 25 people that voted up on this film, I want to shake them by their shoulders and say, What? What is good about this? There's nothing. I'm really tempted to do some spoilers in this, because this film... Uh, screw it. Spoiler alert. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rush through this film so you can feel my pain. Whatever you do, don't watch The Island of Death, 1976. Whatever you do, if you stumble across it, do not watch. This is what happened. So this couple is in Greece. And the guy decides to call his mom. And we figure out real quickly that the phone's being tapped and someone's listening. And uh, so you figure, okay, so this guy who's living in Greece calling his mother is wanted for something or other. Must not be good. Later we find out what. And then um, uh, throughout the film, for whatever silly reason he can think of, for someone just looking at his wife the wrong way, he figures he's got to kill that guy. He's got to kill that person. And then this lesbian becomes involved, and he's like, well, we got to kill her too. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So, uh, god damn. So, so eventually we figure out they're wanted for murder, or the the husband is the the wife who we find out is not a wife but the sister that he's a screwing is kind of just tagging along. So the the Greek police start chasing after him, and uh, they end up in uh, some farmland out in the middle of nowhere. And they stumble upon this farmer who looks like Ian McShane. And Ian McShane ends up raping the woman. And then end up beating up the guy and then throwing him. Basically buries him in a bunch of lye. L-Y-E lie. And he's like, get me out of here. If it rains, I'll burn to death. So of course it rains. And then... Uh, the chick who is uh, not used to feeling real affection falls for the Ian McShane rapist farmer and decides to side with him and screw her rapist incest murderous brother husband and uh, yeah stays with uh, stays with that oh my god what a what a what a disaster so yes uh Dumpster fire garbage slash throw the baby out with the bath water on this one. Real bad. Mm. Next one, 2020 Horse Girl. Critic rating 70%. Audience score 47. Allison Bree stars in this. Uh, it's another one where you can figure that the, the main character has something off. She's a little delusional. She obsesses about some horse that ended up getting taken away from her. So she keeps visiting the stables. and Lucky for her, the stable owners are nice enough to let her hang around, but usually kind of shoo her away. And she works at some store, selling whatever. And Yes, it's a, it's, it's a progression into the madness. Um, it's nice to see Molly Shannon and Paul Reiser get some roles in this. But beyond that, though, it's not great. It's weird. Not in a good way. Uh, can't quite recommend. I won't poop on it too much. But yeah, you can skip Horse Girl. Now showing on Netflix. Also showing... Wait, this is not on Netflix. This is on Shudder. Next one, 1980, Fade to Black on Shudder. Critic rating, 45%. Audience score, 42 This film... I would just when I thought the 80s had nothing left to surprise me with Fade to Black comes into the picture 
this uh, guy who's uh, <laughs> his abusive aunt slash mother who uh, was a big movie star back in you know 1912 uh, she's uh, really strict with him and um, he eventually gets bullied so badly and one of the bullies is a very young Mickey Rourke who I didn't expect to see in this film but uh, eventually he loses his mind and um, starts killing people using like famous movie ways to kill people as best I can describe it mostly he does like movie monsters he'll dress up as whatever like a vampire or a mummy or whatever and kill whoever's making his life difficult but yeah it was uh, it was this was a more interesting descent into madness than the goddamn horse girl I'll say that but yet fade to black uh, okay if desperate next one 2020 secrets in the woods it's a lifetime tv movie so there's nothing on rotten tomatoes as there should not be but imdb has this as a 5.9 out of 10 for horror movies that's pretty damn high um and you know what this movie wasn't horrible lifetime struck gold with the movie static about 10 years ago it was a home invasion film that just happened to be perfect well, not perfect, but, you know, perfect for them. But um, this film was, was really good. It had some twists I did not see coming. Some pleasant surprises. Basically, this chick and this uh, guy she's been dating for a little while. They haven't humped yet. That's important that you know that. They haven't done the nasty. They haven't, you know, grinded uglies. But, um... So they go. So of course, what you what you do, you do you go to the guy's cabin out in the middle of nowhere. So uh, she's out there. She's a city girl, so she's not used to all this woodsy stuff. And this film leads you right on track to figure it's gonna be a stalker in the woods type movie, but then it takes a weird, creepy left turn. Like, oh, we're going in that direction. Mm, no. Okay, and you know what? It was fine. Nice little film, worth a watch. <sighs> okay, if desperate, I almost put it on the watch list, but I'm an ass today. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Nope, not in the mood. Uh, so let's get to our feature film from 2020. We've got The Night Clerk. You're new here, right? Yes, I work the night shift. My name is Bart. Well, it's very nice meeting you, Bart. What? It's nice to meet you. Sorry, I have to practice what to say. Hey, how you doing? I watch people, and I imitate. You watch people? Well, I study them. Yeah, well, I guess you have a lot of people to watch at the hotel. Yes, I do. We have a dead woman here, and I think Bart knows something about that. We found your fingerprints all over the room. This is a fragile boy, and you need to understand that. 2020, The Night Clerk. People pooped on this film. Critic rating 36%, audience score of 30. Ugh. Was the film perfect? No, but it was. Know, kept me going. Ty Sheridan plays this uh, guy with Asperger's who works as a night clerk at a hotel. And he happens to be there when there is a killing. And the police are wondering, was he involved in this somehow? Even though he's weird? Best way to put it? That's, that's, yeah, that's the best way I can describe this. Um, and... The lead detective, played by John Leguizamo, still getting work. Still will never touch the clown from Spawn, which is his best work. I don't care what anyone says about the pest. The clown from Spawn was his best work. Oh, 
Um, this wasn't bad either. This was this was fine. Um, it's fine work for him. Um, Ty Sheridan is amazing in this. Um, he was really great in the killing of the sacred deer with Colin Farrell. If you have not seen that, that movie is something else. Woo! But back to the night clerk. So yes. So then um so then the Ty Sheridan character with his Asperger's he gets transferred to a different motel because he's, you know, quasi involved in a murder case. So what do you do? You can't suspend him. You can't fire him, so you just transfer him. <sighs> so uh, then at the new hotel, he makes this uh, chick who's quasi involved with all this somehow. But he befriends her and things kind of pick up from there. But he's he records everything. I mean, he's like recording everything in all of the rooms. He has this little setup. He's like a computer genius, but he doesn't do it like a pervert sense. Can you know, like Stephen Baldwin and uh, not Stephen Baldwin, the one Baldwin that's forgettable that did Splinter, where he had the big hotel and he videotaped everyone doing everything. This is he's doing this to kind of recap everything he does and to see what other people do so we can learn to communicate properly, which is I guess admirable, although weird and illegal. But um yes, and, uh, then uh then more and more as the mystery of the murder kind of unravels, then you kind of figure out where the characters are going from there. Helen Hunt plays his mother and she did excellent. It's nice to see her Still getting work after her great work in Twister, which I loved. I saw that in the theater four times. The ending still baffles me to this day how a belt buckle can save someone in a F5 tornado. But um, anyway, yes, so the night clerk put it on the watch list. Not quite on top, but I'd, I'd check it out. It's on Netflix. So give it a click and give it a watch. And um, you know what? I've got over a thousand views in my last several shows, and I'm up to 130 some subscribers. Yet no one comments. No one may leave. No one leaves me a comment. Feel free to leave a comment, even if leave me a, a recommendation. If I don't review it for you, I'll tell you where I've reviewed it before, and I'll I'll, I'll help you along. And if it's something I've already seen but have not reviewed, I will review it for you. I'll, I'll do that much. Why not, right? Because that's what Jesus would do. So, um, yes. On the next show, we will have Banshee Chapter. That looks ridiculously frightening. Um, then we have Turnpike Killer. Then we have The Evil Within. Then we have the other guy from the Boondock Saints. Starring in Johnny Frank Garrett's Last Word. That's the title. I'm not making up. And then we have Lisa, which stars the little... If you remember your 90s sitcoms, it was the little girl from My Two Dads and Step by Step. She stars in this. Um, then we have Any Stranger's House, which I don't even remember. And then we have the new Babysitter movie from Netflix. The original was excellent. So we'll see if the, the new one's... It's a sequel, so I doubt it. Uh, then we have Shudder's new arrival called Spiral. So we will review all those, and maybe I'll give you a brief review on what I thought of the presidential debates on to the next episode. So until then, stay scary. <laughs>